The quadruple dreams remains a possibility. How far and how much the Liverpool wanted? How much can it go for the departing Jurgen Klopp at the end of the season? It was one over four over the weekend as Liverpool lifted the League Cup. Uh, yes, defeated um, Chelsea in the final. Yes, it was a much change in Liverpool side, uh, but they ensured that uh, Jurgen Klopp and uh, the whole of uh, the Liverpool fans that uh, thronged. Uh, uh, Wembley left with um, smiles on their face. The focus now is on the Premier League, the Europa League and of course the FA Cup. With that, I welcome you to another beautiful edition of Sports Pizza. My name is Edwin Onyebole. I'm sure your week has started greatly. We have so much to unpack on the show today. The MPFL, we saw some interesting games, big results and high scoring uh, games in Europe. Yes, there were plenty of games. I will focus on the League Cup final, Liverpool versus Chelsea. That game went into extra time and Virgil van Dijk had uh, sealed it uh, for Jurgen Klopp's men. Also, from other sports, uh, let's tell you that Formula 1 will start this weekend in Bahrain. Red Bull and Max Verstappen still the team to beat. I'm not alone in the studio today. I have David Abbey, who, of course, will be here and will dissect all that we had in store for you on the show. Let's take a brief. I go on a break. When we come back, we'll start off the show from the home front. They say charity begins at home. Welcome back. Yes, it's still your favorite sports show, Sports Pizza, Edwin. Of course, David Abbey in the studio. Welcome, David. How are you doing? Yeah, hi, Edwin. I'm, I'm very good. Good to be here. Pleasure as always. Yeah, how's your week been? Well, it's been, it's been good. My team is giving me joy. A lot of joy. I would, what's that team? Arsenal. Oh, come on. <laughs> 20 years, no league title. A quick one. Do you think this is the year you guys break the jinx? Well... It's not, for me, it's not for me to decide. It's, it, it's something I would want, but it's for the players and the managers to, to work for. All right, before we get uh, to the other side, let's start from home front. And um, it's the NPFL. And Lobby Stars took advantage of Remo Stars' inactivity over the weekend because Remo was supposed to face Reverse United. Reverse United were in Continental due to. We'll get to that shortly. But for Lobby Stars, it was a half fought victory over. Heartland and um, yes, a performance that once again tells us that it's going to be a neck to neck finish in the MPFL. Absolutely, Lobby Stars are you know, they are usual suspects, they are there about, and so they are showing why they need to you know, they are putting the pressure on Remo Stars. So it's up to Remo Stars to respond. Then there's a Yimba also somewhere along the line doing what they are doing. So it's going to be it's going to be a neck, neck on neck finish to the end of the season. Yeah, for anybody got a credible draw against Bendel ben Insurance. Yeah. And uh, for Benin Insurance, their coach yes. once again has come under the spotlight, Monde Odige. And there's a feeling that, amongst the press, of course, mm -hmm. that if the MPFL do not clamp down on his excessive behaviors, other coaches might take a cue from it and show disrespect towards journalists. What do you stand? Mm -hmm. or, or do you think that he's been baited, he's been targeted? A case of harassment. No, I do not think so. I do not think so. And also, I don't think other coaches will pick up. I think it's just a personal issue with him because I watched some of his interviews and it feels like it's him against the journalists. Issues happen on the field. You have issues with the officiating. You have issues with you know your players how they are being treated on the field by the referees. But you should not take it out on a journalist. You should remain professional. So sometimes the question they ask him, direct questions, but he will now take it as you know the answer. Answer it for yourself. That's not how to. It's unprofessional. And I think the MPFL need to clamp down on him. You know, just show respect to the journalists. They are doing their job as you're also doing yours. All right, uh, Canopilas back into the uh, top four currently. Um, third on the log, they trashed Sunshine okay. Stars uh, five goals uh, to uh, one. Yeah. And Rabi Ali once again amongst the goals, 43, 43 years. years old. Yeah. What's the magic behind Rabi Ali's longevity performance class? What's the magic? 
I know you're not 43 years, but... No, no, <laughs> so I think um, he takes care of himself. I was privileged to, you know, to serve Edu uh, my NYC in Kano, and uh, I, I know how big Rabiu Ali is. The only person, can probably rival Ahmed Musa in terms of popularity among the Kano fans, and the way he takes care of himself, you, you know, he goes to the gym regularly, and then he's still, he's still active. When, he, when you see him on the streets, uh, you see, he's a, he's a, like, you know, he's very fit, and he doesn't look his age, so I think he takes care of himself, and he's very professional to the court. Yes, uh, Ibrahim Mustafa uh, backed a hat trick in this particular fixture, a can of pillars. Yeah, um, I wouldn't entirely rule them out of oh, um, yeah. uh, the MPFL title, and they've been in amongst the highest scoring teams mm, in yes, the yes, league. Yes. Gombo United defeated Sporting Lagos, yes. two goals to zero. But the biggest result for me um, was Biosa United away at Aqua, Aqua yeah. defeating Aqua United by a lone goal. And my fear for Aqua United is that they might be sucked into this relegation battle and I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. I have a feeling that they might get relegated. Yes. So a week ago, you asked me if they would get relegated. I felt they would have a chance. But when you yeah. lose, when you lose three point in relegation, six point against your fellow relegation um, contenders, then there's you are sinking yourself into a deeper hole. I think I listened to an interview with the coach of Barca United, and then he said they're going to give everything it takes not to get relegated, and then they go to Aqua United and get that kind of result. So I think Aqua United are digging a hole for themselves that they may not be able to come out of. Another result, shooting stars uh, got a credible point away in just when they uh, faced uh, play two. United, Kwa United and Castor United played out a 1 0 draw while Elungu Rangers picked up a huge, huge win against Doma United. Let's take a quick look at the MPFL table. Lobby stars uh, currently top the table. Remo stars second, haven't played a game less. You have Canopilas and Enyimba completing the top four. In the bottom four, Gombe United are 17th on the lock. Sunshine Stars are 18th. Aqua United are 19th. While Heartland a Football Club occupy the bottom of the table. Away from the MPFL, but still on the continent of Africa. In the CAF Confederations League, uh, David Rivers United went away from home and defeated the whipping boys of the group, Academica of Angola, by three goals to two. Mm -hmm. And he puts them um, firmly in position to qualify. Yes, um, they are third on the table. Yeah. Um, three points behind Dreams United, who defeated Club Africa. And it's finally poised. Yeah. Yeah. They have Dreams in the final game. But what a result it was for Rivers United. Yeah, absolutely. In the group stages of a competition of this manner, it's getting result. Three points. doesn't matter how you get them. Three, two, one, zero. You just get the points and keep racking up the points. So, um, it's going to, they're going to give it all it takes. The final game is going to go a long way to determine who is going to you know, come out of the group stage. But I, I fancy them. I give them a huge chance with that result they got. All right, away from football, let's quickly touch on basketball this time. It uh, has to do with the D Tigers. Uh, they lost. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on the losses yeah, yeah. Uh, because it was expected. expected. But once again, it feels like football is the only sport in Nigeria. Is the only sport that gets the attention of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Not just football, it feels like the Super Eagles mm -hmm. is the only mm -hmm. sporting entity that gets attention from the ministry. Look at the shabby preparations the D Tigers had yeah. going into uh, the, the Olympics qualifiers. Yeah. It was expected. I wasn't surprised the manner of losses, yeah. but kudos to the guys. But once again, David, we need to see it's 2024. Yeah. We shouldn't be having these issues. Lack of financial support, yeah. lack of preparation. The Olympics is just yeah. around the corner. Yeah. There are countries that have been preparing for the Olympics four years ago. As it's a month or two months before the Olympics start, we start running Helter Skelter. For how long are we going to continue? With this it's, it's becoming a horror show we keep doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results it's not it's not fair on the athletes they give their best they train and they work hard then the administrators who are supposed to put them you know in in good in good light you know give them everything they need to succeed and not doing the best i think the government has a role to play we don't have a sports policy 
So I think, I mean, the last administration, we saw Sunday Diary, Mr. Sunday Diary, he had um, a 10-year master plan, they drew up, and after his administration went, the document is somewhere now in one file cabinet, nobody is going to access it. So I think we need to have a deliberate policy. The MBBF were aware of this tournament months before. There was even a point they were not going to make it, but somewhere along the line, money came from somewhere. We should stop this fire brigade at the last minute, you know. It doesn't favor the athletes, and it dampens their, their expectation, all their preparation, their hard work is going to waste. So I think we need to change. All right, here's a plea from us on Sports Pizza to the Ministry of Sports. We need a blueprint. We need a viable plan. We need systems and structures in place so that our athletes get the best of preparations yeah. that is um, comparable to what is obtainable globally. Um, away from that, um, the Formula One season starts off this weekend. David, yeah. Red Bull, Max Verstappen, still the team to be. What are you looking forward to as the Bahrain Grand Prix um, gives us the cotton razor for the 2024 F1 season? Yes, yeah, so Red Bull, the team to beat as usual with um, Verstappen. But um, I took a lot of positives over the testing weekend from um, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz of Ferrari. You know, their performance in the testing, they put up some very good numbers and they were impressed with, you know, the interview they gave, they said the car, they are very impressed with the performance of the car and they think they have a shot this year, but there's still a lot of gap to be bridged, but we give them a chance. I'm looking forward to a very exciting season starting this weekend. All right, we need to go on a break. When we come back, we switch focus back to football and this time it is at Wembley, the home of English football, Liverpool defeating Chelsea at extra time in the League Cup final. All right, welcome back. It's still Sports Pizza. Edwin and David in the building. Liverpool defeated Chelsea in the League Cup final. Virgil van Dijk with a sublime header yeah. in extra time. What a performance it was. It was end-to-end. -end. Yeah. Both goalkeepers pulled off some fantastic saves. Before we get to the game proper, let's talk about the missed chances. Um, was it more of bad finishing or fantastic goalkeeping? So I think... For Chelsea, on part of Chelsea is bad finishing. It's something we've seen over the course of their season. Chelsea have created, and then the top five for big chances created in Europe's top five leagues. But um, in goal scoring, actual conversion, they are not. They are not even the top twenty. So I think it's mixed chances. The likes of Jackson. I think Gallagher in that game missed three chances in eight minutes. In space of eight minutes, missed three clear chances, and I think they made it easy for the goalkeeper. And unless Chelsea find the striker, this will continue to be their, the story of their season. Coming into this game, Liverpool were without Musala, Sobo Sly, Trent yeah, Alexander yeah. Arnold, Martin was missing, yeah. Jota was missing, Curtis Davis that missing, mean, yes, yeah. and the number one goalkeeper, Alisson. Alisson yeah. Seven key players in the side. We saw a lot of um, young academy yeah. players on the bench. A couple of them have got um, their cameos, some made a debut yeah. for Liverpool. This is encouraging going into the final stretch of the season, knowing fully well that. With Klopp, yeah. his players are committed to the course. There was a drop-off in quality at some time, but yeah. they more than made up for it with a lot of bravery and heart. Effort. Yes. So I think this is one thing that Jürgen Klopp has stood out for as a manager. The human angle, the psychological aspect of footballers, he has been able to tap into it. It doesn't matter who you are. Once you put on the red shirt and Klopp gets into your head, he's able to psych them. The fact that those youngsters have, you know, on, most of them are making their debuts in a big stage like the final, but they didn't show... Yes. The quality, yeah, the quality was not up to standard that it should be. But in terms of effort and application, at, at a point, Endo was he was knackered. His legs were completely gone. gone. During, yeah, but the one thing Klopp always cooks out of his team's effort. It doesn't matter who is playing; he always get the best out of them. All right, um, can you do the cold repo? Mm, I don't think so. They were I, close. Yeah, two they were close ago, last. And they, they could only ago. win the two domestic cups. Yeah. They lost out in the Champions League and, and the league, league to Man City, yeah, City and Real Madrid. Yeah. So, but I don't. This will not be the season. There's a lot of feel good factor, and it feels like you know, club is riding on the wave of his announcement. But somewhere along the line, they will be stopped. Uh, talking about the Premier League, Arsenal put four past Newcastle. So, uh, it was sweet revenge yeah. uh, for. Arsenal, remember the reverse fixture. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of controversies and animosity between Arsenal fans and Newcastle fans. But hey, um, in the Premier League, what do you think? For, for City fans, it's a comparison with Arsenal's style of play and City. City fans feel like Arsenal are playing the way City are supposed to play. 
while City are playing the way Arsenal are supposed to play. Do you read meaning into all of this? Because so there's been a rumor when Ateta left um, Man City to join us. There was a rumor that most of the tactics that Pep Guardiola was using <laughs> were Ateta was wrong. <laughs> yes, it is. But if we can see something like that, you know, last season Pep Guardiola went with a complete back four of centre backs. Ateta is replicating that this is so I think it's not a coincidence in a way. Maybe it's copying him, or maybe he's the <laughs> actual originator of the ideas. We don't know, but there's a lot to you know. So Arsenal are playing some very fantastic. But I don't know what they went to do in Dubai during the January break, but it's really working. Everything is clicking into gear for them. For Manchester United, 10th league loss of the season. If you said Jim Ratcliffe, yeah. will Eric Ten Hag continue with the team next season? Mm, so they have made, there are people that have made a lot of excuses for him. Injuries, you know, and then inconsistent selection. But one thing that, is, that stands out for Eric Ten Hag is the fact that the team does not play well. It doesn't matter who's on the field. There should be a clear identity, a clear style of play. I watched them against Fulham by the weekend and... At Old Trafford, and Fulham were like Manchester United. They outplayed United on Old Trafford. Luton, Sheffield, yeah, every, Bournemouth. It seems everybody just walks. Everybody. And outplay United. It feels Tenag is happy to just concede um, advantage and wait for... You can't be Manchester United and play like that. That's not how Manchester United is expected to play. You're supposed to, as a big team, take the game to... There's a damning start. Over the last five games, they've considered 100 shots. Tell me how your opponents will not score when you have given them the opportunity of 100 shots. So I think... His style of play is not working and then he's not getting you know the players to play exactly what they're supposed to play. So they they, they have Man City in yeah. the Manchester debut this weekend. A heavy loss could spell his end. Do you agree with me? A heavy loss or even a loss of any kind in that kind of game would spell his end. It doesn't matter how how they play. If they lose that match, they need a result in that game. If not, I think it might be time for him to leave. Sergio Ratcliffe is ready to stamp his authority on that team and Tenag might be the first four guy. All right, let's leave the English Premier League and head straight to Spain in the Spanish La Liga. Barcelona, for a couple of hours, cut the gap between themselves and Real Madrid to five points. But Luka Modric ensured that uh, Real Madrid will go back um, uh, to the top of the table um, or extend their lead back yeah. to eight points. And... Modric's goal reminiscent of uh, the goal he scored Manchester United in the Champions League 2010, 2012-2013 season. Yeah. Old Trafford, I'm not going to go back to that. A lot of heartbreak for Manchester United fans. But um, in games like this, or in games like this, you appreciate the quality in this Madrid side. Absolutely. I think Ancelotti is doing a fantastic job. The ability to, you know... The younger players and then the experienced heads, the likes of Cruz, Modric, knowing when to insert them at the right moment, you know, to add their experience into the team. So, some managers would have ostracized some of these um, older players, but he has kept them in the team and made them feel that they are still part of the system. And they deliver when they are called upon. Form is temporary, but class is always permanent. Yes, uh, class always permanent, but uh, Barcelona are not going down without okay, a fight. Atletico Madrid managed a draw with Almeria, ended 2 2. Uh, but for Betis, they got a huge win against Athletic Club Bilbao. Bilbao. In the Italian Serie A, it was landmark um, achievements for Max Allegri. He became the first manager in Serie A history to amass a thousand points. The most of any manager in the Italian Serie A. And he came in stunning fashion. Rugani with a last gap winner uh, that ensured Juventus. I've got all three points and uh, just kept it respectable between them and Inter Milan. Talking about Inter Milan, Lotaro Martinez hit a century of goals in the Italian Serie A. His brace took him to 100 and 101 goals in that emphatic victory against Lecce uh, for Milan and Atalanta. They played out a one-all draw. Uh, David, um, um, quickly on the Italian Serie A, we've seen a lot of goals and mm. Italian Serie A I'm gradually getting back to the Serie A we saw in the 90s. Absolutely. There's been a, a shift in, you know, in approach. There's more of attacking play in the Serie A. It's good for us to see. You know, Italian football has suffered. The Italian national team has suffered. But I think the influx of foreign players has helped the league to grow. They've also adopted the model that the Premier League adopted. And I think it's good for the league. It's good. Yeah, good for the league. We want to see the Italian Serie A return back to her glory days. That's the watch we can take on the show today. I'm sure you took in, enjoyed, and digested all that we have for you on the show today. We'll be back same time next week. But remember, we'll leave you with our video for the day. Follow us on our social media platforms at Sports Pizza. 
From me, Edwin Onye Police, it is au revoir. And to David, Arrivederci. God bless you. Have fun.